Hello everyone. My name is Tirumala Shaktivel. This summer I participated in Google Summer of Code under the organization Fortran. Now I will be sharing about my contribution during this period. I worked on the project L Fortran which is a modern open source interactive Fortran compiler built on the top of LLVM. Let's have a look on the L Fortran parser. The RE2C generator is used to generate the tokens for the parser. It is the GNU Bison based parser. It uses the generalized LR parsing, which is a backtracking algorithm. The only reason we use GLR is to differentiate between the keyword and an identifier, that is the variable name or the function name, etc. Now, let me talk about my contribution towards the project Finnish AST generation, which was carried out under the mentorship of Dr. Andre Sartik. We passed the missing statement and construct like coarse, entry statement, exit, and many more. We added missing AST nodes, visit methods, and tests for each implementation. Provided passing support for the Fortran 2018 syntax. During my GSOC period, L Fortran released its new versions. We came across many bugs and issues related to FMT and for parser. The best part is that we fixed almost every bugs that was reported. Now, now let's take a look at the steps for implementation. As we know, the first step would be passing the syntax by adding the grammar rules, add the AST nodes, define macros to expose that, AST, that nodes to AST level, implement visit methods and print them, print the pass syntax and add the test to verify and validate the implementation. Now let me demonstrate the implementation uh, by taking an example. Yeah, here is the uh, entry statement uh, which was passed during my period, in, during my GSOC period. And uh, we add the AST node to store the values of the AST, uh, AST. And then we define the macros and expose those values to the AST level. Uh, L Fortran has a feature called uh, FMT, which prints the Fortran, uh, which prints the AST back to the Fortran source code. Uh, and for each implementation, we add a visit statement, uh, which prints the statement properly with proper indentation and everything. For each implementation, we add a test to make sure everything works properly. And uh, uh, we update the test. And this is the output of the AST for the entry statement. And this is the formatted output. And if you discover any issues, feel free to report them in the issue section. We appreciate the testing, uh, the L4 and parser, and let us know if anything is missing. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so we will continue now uh, with the presentation of uh, Van Deep. Please go ahead, change screen. Sure. Is my screen visible and am I audible? Yes. Awesome. So yeah, hi, I am Gagandeep and I'm a software developer at Consight. So I will be talking about, uh, uh, okay, is the whole screen visible, right? This chat and stuff people yeah. are not. So yeah, so I will be talking about supporting arrays and allocatables in L4 Tran. Uh, it was my Google Summer of Project under the mentorship of Andre. So yeah, let's get started. Uh, yeah, cool. So first, a uh, quick overview. So I will be providing a background of L4 Tran and then the list of features that I worked on during my GSOC. So yeah, a quick background. So. Uh, this is about internal representations of code used by L4 Tran. So first is abstract syntax tree. So it contains all the syntax and information in the Fortran code. So I would say you can consider a statement as a tree and then the whole code can be represented as a forest of these trees. Uh, so it contains only syntax information, nothing like uh, type information is stored in this. Uh, abstract semantic representation stores the type information, the symbol tables, and all the heavy lifting is done here, like type checking and adding implicit casts. 
etc and then comes the backend so backend receives the asr as input and generates the code in desired sort of language like llvm and c++ so my work involved dealing with llvm backend there is one more thing that is asr to asr passes so uh, what they do is they take asr as input and trans uh, transforms uh, it into an equivalent asr so for example you can convert all the loops to while loops in these asr to asr passes select cases to if else if ladders so this helps in simplifying the backend because you don't have to implement the same thing for two features separately uh, which are equivalent so yeah so let's move towards array declaration so when i started working on this project uh, the asr regarding the array declaration was already complete like it's uh, like all the dimensional and type information related to arrays was already available in the asr so uh, for the backend for the llvm backend we used a structure to uh, you know describe array descriptors so they have the following elements like first is the array type pointer uh, which is named as array so it is the pointer to 1d memory block so uh, one thing to be noted is that whole data is stored in 1d representation and we use cmo to convert these ijk indices to a single index uh, then comes the offset which is a 64 bit integer as of now this is set to zero uh, like we will see what to do with it in future and then comes the dim which is the uh, dimension descriptor structure like it describes each dimension separately so like it's an array of these dimension descriptor structures so each uh, structure contains a lower bound of the dimension and upper bound and uh, the size of the current dimension for allocatable arrays we also store an extra one bit integer uh, so this keeps track whether the 1d memory that is the pointer is freed or not during the runtime uh, then comes the operations involving arrays so this is a good part about fortran that it supports uh, operations over arrays like you can do c equals to a plus b uh, where all of these are arrays so how do we deal with it is like we convert these operations into loops internally using those asr to asr passes so like c equal to a plus b will become a loop and that loop will contain ci equal to ai plus bi for an iteration variable i so yeah that's it like it is one of the simplest and quickest approaches to implement operations involving arrays uh, then comes the allocatable arrays so like as i told earlier we the descriptor for these arrays is almost the same with an extra one bit integer uh, we use malloc in c to allocate memory on heap for these arrays uh, it is called via llvm ir uh, and then similarly we use free to deallocate the memory uh, then another interesting part is that uh, fortran allows arrays input and output to functions and subroutines yeah c++ does that too uh, then how we deal with it is like uh, when providing input to functions and subroutines like when providing arrays as inputs to these uh, we just pass pointer to the descriptor structure similarly for output from subroutines we just pass the pointer to array descriptor to the subroutine and then subroutine plays with it so yeah you don't have to copy a whole lot of data from one point to the other the uh, interesting thing is that output from function so there are two ways to deal with this one is uh, just you can create a temporary variable then store the output of the function in that temporary array variable and then copy from there to the desired destination the other way is to convert this function into a subroutine and then follow then pass the pointer so yeah that copying data from you know temporary variable to desired destination variable is not needed because you are already passing the pointer to destination variable so yeah this was quite interesting and we achieved this by writing asr to asr pass like converting all the functions to subroutines and then uh, converting all these function calls to subroutine calls then comes the automatic deallocation so the motivation behind this feature is that uh, whenever we are leaving a scope just free the memory on heap uh, uh, related to that scope like all the local variables and then uh, avoid double freeze if user has already deallocated an array then you don't need to do that otherwise it will lead to memory corruption and then uh, the other thing is that before calling a function or subroutine we deallocate the output array like output allocatables uh, 
uh, automatically and then pass it to the function or subroutine. So yeah, this is also like kind of a requirement to implement this feature and like it was not optional. So then how do we deal with it? We added a implicit deallocate node, uh, which appears at the end of all these scopes and it only keeps track of local variables like input output to function subroutines won't be affected. Like uh, if uh, in a, inside a function, uh, the input output uh, will not be cleared via this implicit deallocate. Yeah, only local parts will be dealt with. So yeah, that's all. Uh, thank you for listening. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> uh, final talk uh, um, of the effort and presentation will be given uh, by Robert. Um, awesome. Thank you. Right. So I'm just going to dive right in. Uh, start a timer. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So a uh, brief introduction. You've seen this probably in the last one, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm a doctoral researcher here. I am also a software engineer here. Um, slides, etc. Okay, right. So L4Tran, by now, you know, repetition is the way we all learn. So L4Tran is a nice new shiny compiler. It works, we've seen this before as well, that we have the abstract syntax tree, then we go into the semantic representation. We have one or many optimizing classes. And then uh, the ASR to ASR passes, which Gagandeep was talking about, and then it lowers into the back end. Um, I won't be talking too much about the back end. So as, as you saw, Gagandeep was working in this part as, a lot, and I'm going to be talking about this translation here. And the reason is very simple. Yeah, these are some features which Andre has already covered. And uh, so I was also very happy to work a little bit on the runtime libraries, but anyway, so for this particular talk, what I'm going to talk about is the representation of your code in your compiler, right? So we all know and understand Fortran, we can read this, right? What, what is this telling us? This, by the way, uh, is Gimple. It is from gfortran. And it is very C-like, if you, if you notice. It's a lot closer to C than Fortran for sure. And this is the AST representation inside L Fortran. However, the AST doesn't tell us all that much. You know, for example, it's good to know that it's an integer, but what kind of integer? What about the standard? Well, that's where we come to the ASR. And as you can see, the ASR makes explicit all the things which we need or which the standard requires from the AST. So once we have gone from the AST to the ASR, then we know exactly what's going on. And I also worked on compile time evaluations of uh, constant values and the lowering thereof like here. So we can then, in fact, in many cases, if we can evaluate it at compile time, the backend doesn't even need to know how to do anything. It can just print out the value if it's already there. This makes things faster. It allows you to do a lot more static checks. And uh, yeah, the ASR is fantastic. So once you have the ASR on the right, and just as a reminder, this is comparing it to, well, Gimple, then you, you realize that this tells you a lot about what's going on inside the Fortran language standard. And really this was, oh yeah, this was the actual program. It is just printing out hello world and doing an integer assignment. And once again, this, these instructions are better on the website. So here was the plan, or here was my way of approaching this presentation that people don't like to read the standard. It's only 600 pages, but people don't like to read it. And if you look at Gimple, it's not hard to realize why. I mean, it's not going to help you very much, but the ASR allows you to represent the standard in a very semantically clear way. So I'm going to take the quick example of real, which is a very nice and simple intrinsic. And uh, for clarity, I'm going to skip the boss, I'm going to skip the complex, and I'm only going to look at real and integer, right? So what does it tell us? Well, if it's of type integer and kind is present, then da, da, da. And this is the exact representation which we do in, co in the code. We say, okay, check the function name. Is it real? Great. Does it have one argument? Fantastic, let's move on. Then we literally, we can do all of these nice checks. So, I would say with this on one hand and the standard on the other, you're in a perfect place to go through the entire standard, understand what's going on and uh, learn the whole of the language. So in some sense, that's really where I see the ASR being useful. And why would you or anyone want to learn the language in this way? 
Well, suppose you want to extract something, you want to do a front end feature, or you want to do a wrapper or library, what uh, Harris Snyder is working on, which is also really exciting stuff. And there's a similar argument for integers, it doesn't matter. So the conclusions that I had to skip a lot of stuff. I, I was lucky enough to work with Andre on a lot of other things, which were all fantastic, especially the sign implementation, which I believe uh, Thirumalai and uh, some of us are still working on. But yeah, you know, that's it from my side for now. And yes, of course, my advisor and Andre and my colleagues at Quantsite and family pets groups of audience. Yeah, so thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, we've got one uh, question in the chat. So well, there's a magic number four. Um, yes. So you, sadly. you don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> So there, there is a magic number which we're currently taking. Uh, this is a magic number. And uh, yeah, we're, we're working on getting rid of that though. So yeah, good catch. Oh, I forgot. I wasn't sharing my screen just, just for half a second. So the magic number, which I, I do believe it's this one, right? Where we're saying that, okay, the real kind has to be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're working on getting rid of that. <laughs> yeah. Any further questions? Feel free to, uh, to ask them here. Uh, or type them in, uh, in the Slack. Um, yeah. um, <clears throat> many thanks uh, to all the speakers again. I will hand over uh, to Lawrence for the next uh, for our sessions.